Okay, and here we are. Hello. Who are you? Uh, my name's Austin. I go by Drake. Uh, I'm just back home after three years. <laughs> oh, where you been? Uh, Berkeley in the Bay, Oakland, down there, experiencing the chaos and mayhem. Okay, all right. So, don't stop talking to this person, even though it's not a person. Uh, and I'm gonna walk over here and just put some things down. I'm gonna ask you some questions because you're on Vigil TV. So, are you familiar with this Vigil? Because you've been here. Uh, yeah, from what I understand, it's to end the oppression of the homelessness, pretty much. Correct. Yeah. Do you know the, uh, the ban that we speak of? Yes, the, uh, no sleep, well, the no sleeping, the no camping, the just basic no more harassment with the band that allows uh, let's see, the judicial system to turn a blind eye and do what they wish. Right, which is out of sight, out of mind kind of stuff where they don't let people sleep, but obviously they have to go somewhere. Yeah, well, my thing is, is I like to sleep in the daytime because it's really hard to sleep at night when people are trying to kill you and rob you. Right. Yes. So, what's the obstacle to sleeping in the daytime then? Uh, police uh, presence, presence by forest rangers, uh, and just society not accepting the fact that some people are residentially challenged. Residentially challenged. Or dwelling in Perry. There are, yes, because here, homelessness nice. is a classification nowadays. It's, like, like that kind of person. Yeah. Like yeah. that time. Exactly. That's why we don't say homeless. Profile. Yep. We don't say homeless because uh, there is no such thing I'm as not, a homeless. I'm not homeless. Person. Portland's my home. Yep. It's been my home for seven years. I've been gone for three, but it's still my home. Right on. Sounds like we're on the same page. So, uh, now, do you want me to call you Austin or the other name? Right. What's the other name? Draco. Draco. Okay, Draco. Austin's, uh, well, anyway, the friend of mine. Yeah. Also. It's common. Um. And everybody wants to be viewed as an individual, so that's why people make up street names or other names. Right, that makes sense. So, I'm, I'm looking at what I could pull out here. I, uh, we used to have these real ones. But uh, I got a fake one because the real ones kept getting stolen. They always will. You know, it's okay. I mean, somebody can care for it. Less than they can, but I'd like to keep one here or, or just you know, be able to replace a fake one. So, anyway. I really need a long stem flower because I got a new vase. I thought this would look pretty yeah. in the candlelight. Where's my knife? I'll get you one. Nice. <laughs> so, uh. Long stem rose. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, we have more viewers. So, Draco, have you you've been houseless before? Uh, 28 years I've been on the street. What? Yep. You're looking good. You're old, looking good. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's rough. Uh, it's not easy. But you got you know you got a pretty smile for somebody who's been homeless for a long time. Even though I'm missing one tooth. Missing one, but damn, you got a lot of them. You know, that, that seems to be a hazard for people is keep, keeping their teeth. Yeah, that's the major. hardest thing is that showers. Where, how do you get showers if you're houseless? Uh, uh, there's a guy who provides showers with a trailer. And yeah, I love got that guy. And off vacation. And so I got yeah. a shower today, got cleaned up. You know, he no pulled money. up here. <laughs> he pulled up here to our visual. He did? He has. And uh, we want to support that guy. Uh, showers for the people. Shower to the people. Yes. 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 Shower to the people. That's exactly. Who Mad shout out to Great that guy. Man. Look him up online, you guys. This is uh, yes. his own nonprofit effort, and yes. he's he does beautiful. It all he goes down underneath bridges. Mm -hmm. He's got a couple of regular places. You find out where he's going to be and go take a shower. He provides um, everything, from what I this week, everything. Uh, everything. Everything. Tomorrow and Wednesday, he will be in Chinatown here in Portland. I can't remember. Street, and then fourth and third, coach. Fourth and coach, and then uh, <laughs> Thursday <laughs> evening he'll be under fourth under and coach right Burnside by Bridge. Uh, right by R two D two. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, yeah, yeah, Burnside Bridge on Thursday night. And then Friday back. Back on fourth, fourth and coach. coach. When so, when is he there? 
10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's not too early so either. So if anybody needs it's a shower, nice. there you go. It's hot water. It's really It's got great. a toilet. It's, it's got a sink. It's got a shower. And girls, everything you need in there. Everything. Everything you need, girls. Everything, including girl stuff. Okay. He that's has it all. That is really good to know. Underclothes, socks, hygiene for all women and men. Wow. And that's one everything thing. Everything for free. I learned a long time ago is essential for living on the streets mm. because I got a job in Berkeley, California a few years back at the Dollar Tree. The only thing I had to maintain was my clothing and take a shower. I was living in a camper. I got a job. Uh, it helps. It helps. But it helps nowadays, it's, it's there's just... no jobs as we know. Oh, okay, so. I got a question <laughs> for you. This is like the how to be houseless show apparently because uh, we're trying to help out people. I collect info like that shower to the people thing. I didn't yes. have the dates and times. Now oh, I can yeah. go down with the video, check it out, or I could just remind myself to go to the damn website once in a while. Yeah. But we can also, if you want, grab that guy's card or schedule or something. Definitely. Put Definitely. it in here because yes. we got space for that. Yeah. Yes. Um, we, we will do that. So, uh, want to support and that nonprofit? Sisters of the Road. Yes. Yeah. Sisters of the Road, Blanchett House. The Blanchett House. The, um, now, those two. Portland Mission. Blanchett House, uh, my co host here, 99, he's actually taken the camera with him. I don't know how, how that works because I don't film people who don't want to be filmed. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know how he handled it, and I haven't seen it. But, um, he did it. He went on the road. I think that's awesome. Yes. Sisters of the Road, we are very proud of for what they're working on. They have been around for years. They are doing the Homeless Bill of Rights. Yes. And uh, we can go to those meetings, you guys. If uh, TPI if you... will also help out with your IDs if you don't have no ID. It will help get your ID, your identification, your birth certificate. Can I put you on camera? Yeah. All right. So yeah. let's make this yeah. an interview with Hi, what's I'm your Tina. name? Trina? Tina. 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 Okay, anyway, so now this TPI. has become, if you guys want to look this up, interview with Draco and Tina. That's fine. Somebody's getting screwed. <laughs> or he just wanted to run a little light. Yeah, don't go for it. turned them off. Yeah, I'm Draco's wife. Oh, good. Yeah. Cool, I'm married yeah. to... Yeah, TPI, TPI is another place where... TPI is another place where the homeless can go get their help to get their identification, birth certificates, social security cards. It's, a, it's like a homeless resource center. And they also have a program, uh, the LINK program, to where you can work for the rescue mission to get indoors. Okay. Where they'll put you up indoors. How how successful are they? How long does it take? It's got a long waiting list right now. There's like, I, I was talking to a guy today, and it was like, he had like 200 some odd people ahead of him still. So they were and talking a few months. Yeah. A few months. Yeah, probably. I've heard between six and 18 months Something to get like indoors. Kind of. Just to get indoors, okay? Just to get indoors, but you guys still gotta work for the rescue mission still every day. You know, 5:30 to 8:30 at right. night. Right, and it's easy to make a mistake where you don't check in and do whatever right. they told you. It, you this is part us. of this system. If yep. you think about how many people there are outdoors, 2,500 was the estimate when they did the uh, sidewalk maintenance plan agenda draft women or whatever. Women and children are, are, are 2,500. The worst. Yeah. It's the women and children that are also becoming the more worst. Because they don't homeless. have as many facilities for women and children. They don't. And they, they don't, don't have anything for families. Unless you have a newborn baby, yeah, they don't exactly. have a co-ed anything. No co-ed. So you guys no can't co go to a shelter no, together. We can't go to a shelter together, no. We have to be separate. Right. And that's, you know, if you have, say, an anxiety disorder, yep. going to a shelter, well, actually, you know what? And Any the, woman the going to a shelter, your animals. The shelters you're at not risk. Even allow your animals. Okay. Yeah, and animals, uh, companion, animals. companion animals, are very companion, important yeah. for survival. Yeah, and they don't even allow those in there. Okay, so so not everybody can go to a shelter. Even if no. they could, the waiting list, uh, the, I mean the still, daily list of people still, standing in line. So my friend uh, um, Charles, tall Charles Long here, yeah. he calls this homeless survivor. We were just joking around one day, but you know what I'm talking about? It's like, okay, how long can you stand in line? How, how you know, how much can you remember that, uh, say, over the weekend, you got to keep your five bucks to go get a locker. you got to show up at TPI at 7 o'clock or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's a matter of these skill sets that you have. As if you're trying to be homeless forever, you finally get it down. Hopefully, my God, you're going to get indoors. But they if you're to new... Find out it's, out of, it's on a popcorn list that you get picked out of. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's a popcorn list. Yeah, I did not know that. 
Yeah, yeah. like a lottery type A thing. lottery, I survived. Yeah, yeah, yay. yay, I got indoors. Oh, my, my name so, got picked. So here's but you have something. To be there. You have to be there when your name is picked. We had a troll come online and he's like, what do you guys want for free today? You oh, know, that's wrong. Okay, I don't so. Want anything for free. I don't want to hand out, folks. I want to help a hand up out of this pit. Right, which pit. Is called homelessness, if you want to call it that. It's structurally I'm challenged. I'm not homeless. I'm structurally challenged. Impaired. Residentially impaired, structurally challenged, not homeless. I jack of all trades, master of none. I can do anything when I set my mind to it. And most of it people, come from these. Yeah. And mind you, a lot of people that are out here that are homeless, really, is beyond popular belief, don't really want to be out here. Beyond popular belief. Right. People do not realize, do which not is why we do Vigil TV. Yeah. They try to educate. Homelessness, I have heard that people usually stay about six months, that's an average. The thing is, I mean, when, when I'm talking about outdoor, the yeah, hardest... Without, without, without a facility, yeah, right. without what you need. So, uh, it's I'm not, not counting couch surfing, place. cars, and all other ways of being technically homeless. I'm talking about street living, street which living is really dangerous. Bags and what you got. Okay, so, um, if it's around. just temporary, here, the problem is... During that time, you've got an endangerment factor that's increased in this city because of the way the city's handling. If they let everybody be and say, yeah, go to a park, uh, we'll keep guard around this area because we know that there's people around here, and in the meantime, rest safely in our parks and clear out during the day, then people could actually function, get their shower, you know, get their IDs, maintain their belongings, get a job, get the fuck out. You know, Pardon my language. Yeah, Sometimes but you do have to use bad language to get appointed. Yeah, I guess. So, so this actually is keeping people issues. homeless. Yes. This camping yes. ban. The camping ban is keeping people homeless. It is and really is. that they're starting to move some of the resources for homeless away, people away out us. of the area where the homeless people are. Exactly. They were. <gasps> I have a hard time getting out. Hi, Patrick. Patrick's here. You know Patrick? Hi, Patrick. <laughs> I think I think that's Patrick. The, the picture is too small, and his name is like FB111, you know, 1000, <laughs> just like mine. Oh, my God. Anyway, I think that's Patrick. So uh, you can confirm, unless your name is FB10,181-207407. Which is. It's very sad for you, for your mama doing that to you. Yeah. But <laughs> I think it's Patrick. Okay, so... Um, yeah, transportation and the resources of that for, for the homeless have been pulled away from us to the point where we're like hard to get to. Transportation. It's Tell us about transportation because that was an well, action. Everybody in Portland already knows that there is no more Fairless Square. There is no more. They shut and that off as a first. That is That impacts the low income and the residentially challenged. Those right. are the two <laughs> classifications that it impacts the most. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we don't have cars. And as I understand it, if you're houseless, you actually have to go around this city. You have, people have, okay, there's, there's special needs like disability, uh, parole, uh, Probation. there's, there's, yeah, there's Classes. where you have to go. You might, uh, be, dr you might have to go to Gresham in the morning and be in Hillsboro in the evening. Right. But in downtown where the Fairless Square hits, these are people going back and forth from services like food, going to use the library to look for a job, um, showers, and this is also a reason people choose to live downtown is because all the yes. services are here. Yes. Pretty much. But now they're moving, they're trying to move the services out. Out of They've downtown. They've away with Fairly Square, so now you have to walk every step. Of it downtown. is better. Okay. Yeah, we have to walk every step of where we need to go, and that makes and it very And you difficult. actually can't be on time for certain things. Then. Really, you can't. No. Because the the schedule. Okay, so. Me, when I want to eat, I go to the store, I cook my food, and then I eat. Uh, a person who doesn't have the ability to have an open flame because of the camping ban True that. can't cook, so you're dealing with 7-Eleven and stuff like that. Or those that or, don't have their EBT care and they can't get EBT, you know, food stamps, etc., etc. Then, then, then you're see. you're dealing with Blanche yeah, House so and stuff like that. Bless them for doing sources. that, but there's a line. There's, yeah. And there's a period of time that you have to be there. Certain if time. you're lucky enough to have part-time work, then that may not coincide. Right. So what you're having to do, the amount of time you have to spend waiting, as I understand, for <laughs> everything that you do. A lot of it's the waiting. So just imagine that you have to connect with, uh, you know, Yellow Brick Road in order to get a damn toothbrush. 
Mm -hmm. Because we take it for granted, people who have homes, that eventually I'm going to have money for a new toothbrush. Yeah. But if you have to decide what your $5 spanging amount is going to, if that's what you have. Well, for food or for hygiene. Well, food, you can get food stamps, maybe. Maybe. But you can't spend it on a toothbrush, so you still don't have a toothbrush. That's right. Right. So anyway, you still don't have underwear. You still don't have socks and stuff. You know. I've heard the amount of of hours that homeless people work not working, like either spanging or cans, which is a real service to this city. Being resident of you know, for 28 years, I've been working every single day because I have a full time job trying to survive. True. Right. To it's a full-time job trying to survive out here. And that is it's not a easy. job. It's really not easy. Every person on this planet has that same job. It's just easier for some. Right. Than it is others. So what would you think if we were to say to city council that what we want, and we talked about this meeting because we just found out that there's a group that actually proposed this to Amanda Fritz in 2010, uh, that they would facilitate such a meeting. But uh, we've been saying it. Cameron Witten has been saying it. We want the stakeholders to be talking about how the city spends its money for housing and how they, you know, interpret city code for people who don't have roofs over their head. Um, how they plan on fixing it? <laughs> why are all these buildings sitting abandoned and vacant and rotting when they can be put to use? For the homeless. If you don't want people sleeping in your park, give them a place to go. Okay, so the, the Portland uh, has decided that they're going to uh, enforce more heavily people not even putting a blanket down and yes. sitting on it. They sure can't that. even sit As down yeah. this week, on the park. As of this no week, no more blankets, sleeping bags. sleeping bags or anything of in that park. nature. So we found a way around that. They're called Snuggies. They're <laughs> totally legal because they're not a blanket. Right on. It is Viva a, la Snuggie. Hey, maybe some female intervention. Okay. Uh, let me uh, close there. up this interview, all right? Uh, you guys, thank you for the interview and come back and talk to all us right, again. Yeah. And I'll be right back, you guys. Yeah, yeah.